Ah yes, electricity. It's required in almost everything we in the developed world do in our day-to-day -day lives. And it seems as though we could not live without it. Whether you're doing something important on the computer, making a monetary transaction, driving a motor vehicle, frying a snack, or even decimating those pesky mosquitoes, electricity is involved in one way or the other. But what if electricity suddenly disappeared one day? And no, I'm not just talking about a blackout. I'm talking about the pure absence of electricity, where humans suddenly fail to harness the power created by the movement of electrons. If electricity were to disappear, all animals would tend to die. But why? As electrical signals are required to send vital information through your nervous system via neurons, the pure absence of electricity would mean that your brain would not work, and hence your body would not work, and everybody would drop dead. In fact, the average human brain uses around 20 watts of energy to work, which is just a bit more wattage than the energy needed to power my bedroom lamp. But for the sake of this one video, let us assume that the electricity within our bodies still does agree, still does agree but everything else loses its current. So what are some things that would happen then? For this video, let us focus on what would happen to our transportation systems if such a scenario ever happens. Perhaps the most catastrophic transportation failure would be that of our aerial transportation. As for airplanes, although there are mechanical backup systems set up for such scenarios, the backup systems are only useful and effective at certain altitudes and speeds. Even then, good experience is required to land the plane solely with mechanicals. And remember, the ground also lost the electricity, so the airports would be dark at night with no guiding signals. So let us assume that the worst case scenario happens, where all aircrafts in the air are to plummet towards the ground. Alright, so using this website which I have included in the description of this video, we can determine how many commercial aircrafts are in the air at any given time. So as of November 21st, 2017 at 6.16pm Eastern Standard Time, there were approximately 12,500 aircrafts in the air. Assuming that each of the flights have an average of 100 passengers, we could calculate that there were approximately 1.2 million people in the skies at that moment. Nonetheless, having 12,500 aircrafts in the air at a given moment is above average. And a more reasonable estimate for the amount of people in the sky would be somewhere around 950,000. So when the power goes out, roughly a million people would be by, would be by planet in several minutes, and thousands of airplanes would rain down upon the earth like missiles. And this only includes commercial airlines. So when we include the various other aircrafts, such as private jets and military equipment and bystanders on the ground in this equation, the death toll would be even higher. And within 7 minutes or so after the initial power crash, all of the world's motorized aircrafts would be grounded and humanity's era of aviation would be over. Billions of dollars worth of goods will also be wasted and the International Space Station would also be completely useless then. So now that we have discussed the aerial transportation system, let us assume what would happen to the aquatic transportation system if the power would doubt. As of January 1st, 2016, there were approximately 51,400 merchant ships operating around the world. This number includes various types of trading vessels, including bulk carriers, container ships, and oil tankers amongst others. Through this website, we could see where the world's merchant ships are at any given moment. And when the power goes out, all of those ships' engines would stop, along with the navigation systems and the electrical circuits of course. This would result in all of the vessels being stored in the middle of the ocean, and depending on how deep the water is, the ships may either be stranded and marooned, or they could sink slowly into the water. And keep in mind, there would be no way for the ships to signal other ships as the communication systems are now gone and the ship would also be left in the dark as there is no current to power the lighting. When the ships do sink, billions of dollars and tons of goods will also submerge as around 20 million shipping containers would never make it back to land. Oil spills will also be everywhere causing a huge environmental hazard. So those were business oriented vessels that typically have a very low crew number. But let's say you were on a passenger ship, such as a cruise. According to cruisemarketwatch.com, there are 298 operating cruise ships around the world, 
having a total capacity of over 486,000 people. When the power goes out, these ships would face the same consequences as the merchant vessels, but with the more population on board, the ordeal would be much more hectic. Perhaps the worst part about all of this is that the people would have no way of knowing that the entire world lost electricity and help be virtually impossible. And lastly for aquatic transportation, all of the world's submarines would sink to the bottom of the ocean and never to rise again. But if you were to be traveling when electricity suddenly does vanish, you are more than likely to be traveling on land. So let us predict what would happen to anybody who was traveling on our world's roads or rails when the electricity stops. Right at the moment when current ceases to exist, all cars that require a spark plug would stop accelerating and slowly start to decelerate. Even the few vehicles that do not use spark plugs and operate on diesel engines would lose many functions. And overall, motor traffic will come to a halt across the globe. But fortunately, as braking mechanisms do not require electricity, drivers could still stop their vehicles at will. Nonetheless, the mass panic and confusion caused by the sudden electric failure and the simple stupidity of some people would definitely cause some crashes and accidents. If there were to be any vehicles carrying flammable or any hazardous material, such as tank trucks, involved in the crash, some fatalities would occur on the roads. But overall, the consequences are not as dire as traveling on an aircraft or shipping vessel. And unless you were driving in a deserted place like this, you are likely to be near other people for assistance and probably won't be too bad off. As for train travel, the similar conditions apply. If you were to be traveling in a rapid transit line, such as a subway or monorail, you may be trapped for a few hours, but hope shouldn't be too far off as these lines pass through densely populated urban and suburban areas. However, train journeys, especially the long distance ones, are more likely to pass through inhospitable locations farther from civilization compared to road vehicles. To show you what I mean, here we have a map of all of the world's railroads. And as you could see, although many are in well populated areas, there are lines that go through places of extremely sparse population where nobody lives. So if your train were to stop in the middle of places such as the Trans-Siberian Railway or the Outback Desert in Australia, you are pretty much screwed. So as of conclusion, a sudden absence of electricity would be quite devastating on our transportation facilities. If you were to be traveling in the air or on the water during this event, you won't be too lucky, I'm sorry. But for those of you who are traveling on land, unless you were crushed by a falling airplane, got in an accident, or were stuck in the middle of nowhere, you are probably going to make it. Unfortunately, you would then realize that the whole world lost electricity. So the next time you go somewhere, whether you are crossing a river on a ferry, going on an overseas trip on an airplane, riding a train to a city, skipping school by car, or even taking a casual walk. This scenario, this scenario is something, something to think about. about. Oh hey, you guys are still here. I just want to address the fact this, that this is my first content video on this channel and my second video ever on YouTube. So please do give me feedback in the comments and please make sure you share, subscribe and like this video.